Hi, my name's Mike. I'm a paramedic at Mount Sinai. Um, I think for me, it must have been, you know, I, I probably hear this a lot, but uh, around September 11th, I grew up in New York City. And I grew up in Manhattan. That was a pretty big moment for me. I still remember it. You know, I remember thinking that, uh, you know, the people who did these types of jobs were pretty incredible. And I wanted to be like them. Um, I mean, it varies from day to day. It's a pretty dynamic job, right? I mean, you can, uh, you know, anything from emergency childbirth to cardiac arrest, uh, you know, dri just driving an emergency vehicle in the streets is sometimes a little complicated in New York City. People don't like to get out of the way and uh, it can be a little dangerous. So uh, there's, a there's a pretty big variety of uh, things you learn. But for example, for a paramedic, we undergo about 1,200 hours of rotation hours outside of a year worth of classwork. So things like ICU rotations, operating room rotations, um, you know, just emergency room rotations. So, and, and then there's obviously all the rescue training, uh, how to deal, you know, people in entrapped situations, vehicles, et cetera. Oh, I mean, you have to love this job, you know, <laughs> it's not worth doing. Um, it's, it's hard. You know, there's some days that are really awful. It's really busy. You see things that, you know, most people wouldn't see, but, but if you love it, it's all worthwhile. You have, you have to be sure this is something that you truly care about. Oh, the best part of my job is I get to hang out with one of my best friends at the truck all day and have adventures. I mean, my partner's fantastic. And, um, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm working at the time. Uh, well, I mean, we have, you know, we have great medical direction, great leadership, and we've got great employees. I mean, really everything, you know, we, we, we have cutting edge equipment, which makes my job so much easier to do and so much more fun. Um, and, you know, the people you work with, you know, really make all the difference. You know, we, we have some wonderful people that we employ. Um, it's, it's, I guess, the uncertainty. You know, you don't know what day you're going to have when you come in. You know, I work 6.30 to 2.30, and that can mean anything from I'm sitting around drinking coffee without anything to do, or I could uh, be responding to somebody, you know, trapped underneath the train. So uh, just, you know, you, you, never, you never know what's coming. I, I, that's pretty much the biggest challenge for me. Um, largely the same. You know, we, we certainly... Uh, the call volume is a lot lower, right? I mean, we probably do about four or five, you know, calls on average in a day and, you know, normal stuff, you know, everything from, you know, mild chest discomfort to, you know, cardiac arrest. But, you know, when, when the COVID-19 when COVID began, I mean, the call volume just shot up. You know, we're doing eight or nine calls in a single day uh, and they're all related to the virus. Well, I mean, definitely people are a little more reluctant to go to the hospital right now a little more afraid of it. Um, you know, we wind up, you know, advise, you know, wind up, you know, almost doing, I don't want to say uh, home care, but, you know, people, people call us and we sort of, you know, step in the shoes of a, you know, a uh, general practitioner, you know, people have questions about, you know, their medical conditions, you know, uh, you can have some elderly people calling because they're afraid that they haven't had their, you know, hypertension medications refilled. They just want to know that they're going to be okay. And they just need somebody to give them, you know, decent advice about, you know, whether or not they, should or shouldn't be in the hospital for what they're suffering from. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's something I've never seen before in my entire career, and I hope I don't again. I mean, there was, you know, just the, you know, the, the number of people calling and, you know, the number of people who are sick and severely sick. I mean, the, the scariest part was, you know, since there was so little we understood about it at first, you know, we weren't able, you know, it was, we didn't, it's not that we didn't know what to do. We're well trained and well equipped to handle these types of situations, but you know, just not just knowing that you're not going to be able to help everybody, or because you know that's you know why everybody does who does these sorts of jobs do this. I mean, you want to you want to help people, and um, it was definitely rough not being able to help you know everyone who needed us. Oh yeah, I mean my my the guys I work with are the best. All of you, you know, I'm really proud of all of you. Um, you know, we pulled through all this together, and you know, without you know my work family, I never would have been able to get through this. Because people understand, you know, what I deal with and truly, truly care about. Um, the communities and the people they're serving and you know they're one they're a wonderful group of people and I'm so proud of each and every one of them.